The family of the two teenage boys who were assaulted at Masal Sport Resort has welcomed the sentencing of Kwabas Klassen. Klassen was handed a suspended five-year sentence and fined 20,000 rand for attempted murder. Klassen and his co accused Stefanus van der Hazen and Johan Nal were seen on video footage trying to prevent black teenagers from entering the pool area at the resort. And of course, this is footage that went viral on social media. Now, Professor Brian Nageri is the father of one of the boys who was attacked at the Muscle Sport Resort and joins us live now. Thank you so much for your time, Prof. Some have seen the sentence as a slap on the wrist. I wonder what the family's take is. Uh, Prof, I think you are on mute. Sorry, sorry, Bungi. Uh, good evening uh, to, to all. The sentencing involves uh, a suspended uh, direct imprisonment of five years. Uh, suspended for, for, for five years and also a fine of 20,000 for assault GBH plus a two-year uh, suspended sentence for three years. There is also a correctional supervision uh, for a period of three years and also house arrest for a period of three years. So uh, that is the, the sentencing regime that was combined for the offences. And I wonder how the family then received this particular news. We had to take, uh, uh, as a you know, the best interest of the children as a priority, and and secondarily, really, we had to also consider the public interest. And uh, after a protracted uh, a plea bargaining we have had to come uh, to accept the outcome as they are, as far as criminal proceedings are concerned. It sounds like um, you were not entirely receptive of it, am I correct? No, in, in, in everything that you negotiate, you come to a point where you either accept or reject. And in our case, we had a mutual acceptance uh, of the, the plea bargaining. All right. Now, you know, one of the things, of course, that um, when, when one looks at that footage and, and, and what transpired on the day, and you and I have spoken before about, yeah. you know, the, the trauma that the young men had to, you know, go through and the difficulties that they faced subsequently as a result of this particular incident. And I wonder how are they doing now, um, given this latest development? Are they in a better position? The decision that we, we came to was to try and ensure that they go through a proper uh, rehabilitation without any disturbance because they deserve that. Uh, so it was difficult. You know, the issue of these kind of crimes uh, are not dissimilar from uh, the crimes such as rape and so on because they always have a double whammy where you have to uh, come and repeat yourself all the time and subjected to all sorts of, you know, uh, judicial processes. However, we, we, we slept on it and we, we came to the conclusion that it is best that we, on behalf of the children, uh, ensure that uh, this matter is settled as, as, uh, as much as acceptable as possible so they could continue with their lives. And have the children accepted? The decision. They have accepted, they have been engaged all the time. Uh, I'm unable to go into the details of their conditions. Suffice it to say that they are being supported, we are supporting them so far. And uh, this is part of uh, that process to ensure that they are okay. There is one other outstanding <clears throat> case pertaining to one of the perpetrators which will only come on the 6th of December. Hmm. So it has actually impacted on everybody, you know, since since the cases uh, began, and uh, the court processes uh, can really drag and drag. So yeah. uh, th this situation really uh, is, is the time to give the children the chance to to recover and, and and rehabilitate, so they can carry on with their lives. 
And this incident, of course, once again, like a number of others that we've seen, raised the issue of racism, raised an issue around this broader discussion. And I wonder, um, you know, from where you're sitting right now as a parent, as an activist, as someone who has watched these, um, you know, s scenes unfold in one instance or another, do you think we are having an honest enough conversation about the impact of racism uh, on those who become victims of such crimes? No, honestly, I don't think we do. Uh, there is lack of agency from all structures that are supposed to be actually taking this kind of matter seriously. There are some who are really doing their bit. However, uh, you know, the institutional agencies also depend on individual agencies. And in our case, we realize that uh, more and more uh, there is, if you like, a decline of uh, responsibility and accountability among such structures. Mm. And uh, this is partly to blame, actually, because there is no adequate education that is relevant to ensuring that people be become cognizant of uh, the environment in which they live and their own history. So, Prof, I'm going to ask you a personal question then in light of what you've just said, because even you said it earlier on that the, the, it's a double whammy. It's a difficult situation on all fronts. As a father <coughs> watching that footage, take me back to that moment. As a father, you're watching this footage and you obviously would have the inclination to want to defend your son in that moment. I wonder how you felt when you watched that. Sure, it, it, it was a difficult moment. Um, I, I walked actually into that uh, swimming pool and I was there trying to assist. And, uh, you know, it, 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 one was just on the brink of really doing what uh, a person would do in self-defense. However, uh, given the, the environment and other people being there, uh, in hindsight, you know, we, we thought, look, uh, let us try and, and uh, see how we can intervene without also, you know, uh, uh, becoming perpetrators in the, in the circumstances. However, it's, it's been a painful process. Uh, it's not been easy and really would love to thank all those who have supported us, particularly uh, uh, the veterans as well and uh, also community members, but it has not been easy for anyone in their family members, including uh, the children. So it, it's a tall order uh, that has really impacted on all of us, yes. All right, Prof, thank you so much for your time. Uh, do appreciate it. And as you say, there are many layers to this conversation and number of chapters that you still need to, you know, page through. So um, one can only wish you all the best when it comes to this one. That's Professor Brian McGilly, father of the boys who were attacked at Muscle Sport Resort.